verse 32 and 33. Um, Christina, can you see my pages? Okay. All the prominent desires being entirely finished and the body motionless results in the absorption or laya, which is only known by the self with the capital S and beyond the scope of words. Whether where the sight is directed, absorption occurs. That is which the elements, senses, and shakti exist externally, which is in all living things. Both are dissolved in the characteristic list. The Vijna Bharana Tantra states that successfully in this way, wherever there is mindfulness on either void, on a wall, or on some excellent person, that mindfulness is absorbed by itself in the supreme and offers the highest benefaction. Wherever the mind finds satisfaction, let it be concentrated on that. In every such case, the true nature of highest bliss will manifest itself. Satisfaction is tusti, which indicates a deep moving joy where there is no mental agitation or fluctuation. In such a state, there is total oblivion to the external world and thoughts or vilkapas, imaginations and ideas. It is impossible to eliminate desire from the mind. Desire is rooted deep and the store is inexhaustible. Mind is constituted of desire. Superficial desire from a material gain, achievement and fulfillment can be simplified and eliminated. There are three predominant forms of desire in most people. In the Shastas, they are called Vidasara, desire for property and money, Pritisara, desire for children, grandchildren, tribe, and Baliswara, desire for husband or wife. These are very common desires. The fourth is Lokiswara, desire for name, fame, and power. It is not present in most people. It is present in only a few people. When there is Lokiswara, you want to be very famous, very powerful, like Napoleon or Hitler. Vasana is latent desire or seed. From Vasana springs, from Vasanas spring desire, greed, anger, then desire for liberation, and then finally moksha or liberation itself. The, the desire to know or vijana is the desire and the desire for liberation are positive and sophic desires. They are necessary for evolution. They should not be suppressed under any circumstance. Never make that mistake because sometimes while you are trying to suppress your vasanas, you are almost giving a death blow to your personality. How can we do this? It poses a problem because vasanas cannot be satisfied. Desires are insatiable. There is no end to gratification of vasanas. Even if you are given the lifespan of the whole earth to enjoy vasanas, still there is no end. But if there was no vasanas or desires, man would not strive. He would not work and he would not become active. It is only in the sophic person who has attained the sophic mind that there will be fewer or no vasanas. However, when one is rajastic or tamasic in evolution, one must have vasanas. If a man is lazy, tamasic, and he, if he does not have desires, he will become yet more lazy. But if he has desires, he's goaded to work. Vasanas compel him to become active. So in the tamasic state, vasanas should be stimulated. In the rajastic or dynamic state, they should be balanced. And in the sophic state or balanced state, they should be eliminated gradually. How are you going to know if you are sophic, rajastic, or tamasic? It is very difficult to judge oneself. Everyone thinks themselves to be sophic. But there are certain indications by which you can judge whether you belong to that phase or category. If you have greed, you cannot say you are sophic. If you are involved in many sorts of activities or the mind is restless, never at peace, then these are a few indications by which you can know that you are the rajastic type. In example, your temperament is rajastic. How do you know that you are tamasic? You will be prone to procrastination and laziness. Those people who sleep too much are tamasic. When you're aware of Diana, inner peace, and many other things, that is an indication of Safa. So when a person is lazy or procrastinating, he should be injected with Vasana. 
Because without Vasana, he is not going to evolve at all. Evolution is from Tamas. Thomas, the, sod, the static state, into Rajas, the mutative state, and not directly from Thomas to Sattva, the sentient state. First, a Tamasic man must change into a Rajasic man, and then into a harmonized man, Sattvic. If you have become Triguntita, having transcended the three states, you cannot transcend all the Vasanas all of a sudden. Most people in the world are a mixture of these three states, predominantly rajasthic, sometimes a little tamasic and a little sophic. Very few people are predominantly sophic. So according to one's predominant quality, one should be given the appropriate sadhana and dharma. Even uh, either the vasanas should be curtailed or they should be fulfilled and subliminated. So vasanas are not out of place in our life. Desires and passions are necessary for man's evolution. Just as you take a thorn out without an, with another thorn and then throw away both and then throw both away, the learnt vasanas in the tamastic state should be extricated by vasana. For too much involvement in vasana eventually develops viagra or dispassion. If you suppress the vasanas, you maintain the state of tamas. If you have a taste for it, if you have a liking or raga for it, you may not fulfill it in your daily life, but you can dream and you may fantasize. This is so-called fulfillment. Life should be planned in such a way that there is time when you should fulfill one type of vasana and another time for another type of vasana, et cetera. Playing games, the activity of marital life, family, children, opening hospitals, going to gangrotri, or sitting in meditation are also vasanas. How can we stop the karmas, cause and effect, and some scars, impressions from entering the subconscious and unconscious mind? Why try to do it? Why waste your time? You will only be removing some scars for something else to come in and take their place. It is like being in a railway, a railway station or airport, one plane coming, another going. It is the same with the samskaras. Can you close your eyes to them? As long as you are still centered in the nature of your experience or in your desires, how can you stop the samskaras? Rather than blocking the samskaras, you should stop your production of them. However, you cannot stop producing samskaras. Consciously or unconsciously, you produce them. So instead of blocking the samskaras or interfering with them or trying to eliminate them, it would be far better to develop, create, or initiate stronger and spiritually uplifting samskaras. Thus, the positive will overcome the negative. When you are trying to develop the inner experience, you are trying, you are developing strong some scars. It is possible to fix the some scars, but for the majority of people, it is dangerous. For sometimes, in the effort of fixing and adjusting, pacifying and eliminating the some scars, you are eliminating your whole personality, and you run the risk of developing a very abnormal personality. Whether it is through mantra, yantra, tantra, or hatha yoga, or even religious practices, do not make the mistake of fighting with the samskaras. You will only be disturbing the structure of trillions of archetypes in your brain. What are you going to do with all these trillions of archetypes in your brain? Be very positive. Don't fight with the basis of your life. After some time, the vasanas should be subliminated. First, the vasanas are related to the body, family, and career, but later they should be subliminated. How can we subliminate these vasanas? There are three ways of subliminating vasanas. Be sure that you do not make an error in this in life. Go the sure way, <laughs> exclamation point. The sure way, I love that, go the sure way with exclamation point. <laughs> The surest way is to develop the higher, more noble and sublime attitude in life. And then all these people, all these positive samskaras will follow you. All will be transformed in time. You don't have to kill any samskara. You don't have to destroy the basis of your existence. This is a destructive way. Second is by karma yoga, where you do social service like Mahatma Gandhi and such people. There are other way is to attain final samadhi. Practice half an hour of meditation and shuna, the void, 
there are three methods for subliminating the vasana. In samadhi, the vasanas are burnt completely. In karma yoga, the vasanas are dissipated and they become weak. Then there is a fourth way that is very difficult. You leave everything to God, the divine cosmic will. Let him do what he likes. Verse 34. Some say, Leia, Leia, but what is the characteristic, characteristic of Leia or absorption? Leia is the non recollection of the objects of the senses when the previous deep rooted desires and impressions are non recurrent. In the state of meditation, when the meditator, that which is meditated upon, and the process of meditation are not three separate experiences, but one experience, then there are no thoughts in the mind. Mind is totally absorbed, and that is Leia. In the Vedic and Tantric tradition, the absorption of tattvas is said to be Leia. It means the absorption of the gross and individual energy or shakti into its original cosmic state. Others say absorption of mind in consciousness. Both are referring to the same thing. Individual mind is the product of shakti and the original state of shakti is in total equilibrium and with consciousness. However, it is not, however, it is defined. It should be understood as a state of total unification and identification with the object of concentration where the experience of capital I is non-existence. This requires a state of mental purity. It is a process of elimination of both the external impressions and the subtle realm. The problem every sadhaka is faced with is how to make the mind, which is full of vikapas or imaginary thoughts, become still. Abhina Vakupta states that when there is vikapa, neither accept nor reject. It will retire on its of its own self and you will find yourself where you, to be what you are. In the Shiva Sutras, this practice is known as Shambhavapava, Haya. Mm -hmm. You should concentrate on one pure thought or Shuddha Vakapa. A Shuddha Vakapa is, is a thought which binds you to individual experience where Shuddha Vakapa is that which arouses it in you the idea that you are in fact the universe, the universal self. Practice of Shuddha Vokapa according to the Shiva Sutras is Shakta Paya and Jnana Yoga because one directly uses the mind and Chitta Shakti. Swami Sivananda defines Leia as deep sleep but it is not an unconscious state. The description of Nirvikapa Samadhi given by Swami Sivananda is the same as that of Laya described here because in Nirvi Kappa Samadhi, there is no reoccurrence of impressions, some scars or vasanas. Through experience of that Samadhi, desires no longer influence the consciousness. I am the fire that burns the karma of one who is beyond all karma. I am the fire that burns the sorrow of one beyond all sorrow. I am the fire that burns the body of one who is devoid of the body. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Of Vadhuta Gita 3.9. 35. The Vedas, Shastas, and Puranas are like common women, but Shambhavi is a secret, like a woman of good heritage. Of course, this sloka is not ridiculing the Vedas, etc. It is merely stating that anyone can read these Shastas and understand what he may. But those intent on getting into substantial spiritual existence will have to practice. For this purpose, Shambhavi Mudra is recommended, but it will, be have to, it will have to be learned from the guru. If you practice Shambhavi with sincerity and perseverance, it is bound to awaken higher experience. The word Shambhavi is the name of the creative power of consciousness, Shiva. Shambhavi can stir Shambhu or Supra consciousness. Shambhavi Mudra is also known as from Madhya Dristi, an example, gazing at the eyebrow center. In chapter three, three mudras had been, have been listed as the most important mudras, but Shambhavi was not included there. It has instead been included in the chapter on Samadhi for a good reason. In the state of Samadhi, Shambhavi mudra takes place of its own accord. Swami Muktananda Paramahasa 
has described how his eyeballs rolled back into his head when he was in a deep state of consciousness without any effort on his part. Shambhavi is likened to a woman of good heritage or Kula. The Tantras explain Shakti, the female aspect and principle as Kula. Shiva, the male principle is a Kula without heritage. The union of the two is Kaula, where the branch of Kaulacharya arose. That is known as Vama Marga Tantra. Shambhavi is a technique employed in Tantra to arouse deeper states of experience. Only the initiated are taught these practices. Therefore, what is being said in this sloka is that scriptures such as Vedas are for the general public, but Shambhavi is for the initiated. Um, how are you guys doing? Do you want me to pause or keep reading? The, you good too? Uh, I, I think the, the verses 32 and 33 yeah. were kind of um, packed a great deal of information, for me at least. Yeah, I thought I thought they were I love that. Um, I love that verse on desire. And I thought I thought it was a good reminder for me because we were talking about feeling lazy, which I've been feeling extremely lazy this week. But this reminder of um, having desires, because I think Sue, you, I know you talked about this late, earlier in the week, but like it be, toward the end of the year, it's almost as if my desires dissipate because if I don't get it done by January 1st, I have to it's almost like I got to end this year's and start over. So I'm in this like lag time and it's like the feeling of procrastination and laziness and it, it's not, so maybe I need to, I need to rethink how I structure that because I'm forcing this non-desire on myself and it's causing me to be extremely lazy. You know what, and it's interesting that you say that because when, when you were reading this and I was thoughts were passing through my mind. And the one thought was, um, but I have uh, both. I have both the desire to do a lot of activities, to belong a lot of, to a lot of things, et cetera, et cetera. And also the desire to procrastinate and just see, sit and read cozy mysteries on the couch all day. I have both going and, they're, and, they, and right now they're both going at the same time. So I thought, you know, it's possible to, be a living contradiction. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that point. I was going to say that as well. I think we're all, we're always everything, maybe some at the same time, maybe not, you know, I think it ebbs and flows. And um, I think that's the beautiful part of, of life and working through, you know, so I, I can, I related to that last, uh, that last section as well. Yeah, it's, it's nice reminded to know that yoga teaches us that where we are is exactly where we need to be. And it, it's always a nice reminder when you read it, you're like, oh, what I'm doing is exactly right. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a question for Amanda, and that is um, at the bottom of 515, it says, how do you know that you're tamasic? You will be prone to procrastination and laziness. These are people who sleep too much. Um, Etc. So, in in a way that reminds me almost of the sluggish side of being kapha. Is are they? Is is this like a parallel thing? So Christina, she's referencing the Ayurvedic doshas, which are you're born with a certain constitution, according to where your parents were at at the moment of conception, and that's sort of how you move through life, and it dictates your um, personality and your likes and um, you know what food you should eat and lifestyle choices and things like that so Ayurveda teaches that every dosha can be any of the three gunas which would be like um, a pit of person can become tamasic um, it's their general like explanations for the energy of something like okay like um 
it, it's really like if you look at it at the grander scale of the universe, there are things that are inert, which would be tamasic, and there are things that are very active and moving around, which would be rajastic, and there are things that are very light, which is sattvic. So he's taking, she's taking it to a personal level where she's saying if you're like, what is the energy of your action? So if you're just kind of like lying around all the time, whatever your constitution may be, and yeah, sure, kapha can be more prone to becoming tamasic because when they're in balance, they get they feel heavy and depressed and they don't want to move around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there is a tendency towards Thomas there, like Pitta people and Bada people have can have a tendency towards Rajas, but every single person has the opportunity to find that balanced energy of Sattva. It's really all about what do we put in is what our body mind becomes. It's like what you are, what you eat. I mean, yogis teach you are what you imbibe. So if you're constantly putting yourself into environments that sort of force you into inertia, like you're just constantly sitting around watching TV on the couch, I thought it was an interesting perspective that it's like, um, it's like the desires fuel the energy, you know, it was, yeah. you know, like for the householder yogi, because not all yogis are sitting in caves in the Himalaya meditating right we have we're householders we're living we're moving and i remember asking my ayurvedic teacher um you know as a yogi i thought that your diet was supposed to be all sattvic all the time and she said well you're not sitting in a cave you would kind of be like a little too relaxed all the time then um if you were constantly like, completely perfectly balanced like as a householder, you have to run around after your kids. So you need a little rajas and then you got to come down from that. So you need a little tamas. So, you know, the, the diet of what we embark as a householder is maybe like 85% sattvic. And then we have, you know, some rajas and some tamas too, because if you have a family, you do need to have that desire to get some money to provide for them, right? And have a house over their heads. And it's just like a natural part of being human. But the problem occurs when those desires um, become false identities and they lead to suffering from that. That like we are only our ability to make money or like, like we're only the power that we have over other people or how famous we are, right? That's not the true identity according to Yoga Yoga. It says we are this pure consciousness living in the body mind, but the body mind is always gonna have um, um, in the Gyana tradition, they call it the four fountains of desires, right? It's like basic, basic needs that we um, got to provide for ourselves. And then, yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Kapha can be more prone to Thomas for sure. Yeah. I mean, not, not like I feel like I, I didn't mean to imply you're, you're locked in that area. Because... Um, uh, I've done your Ayurvedic um, workshop twice, and it's it's clear that if I if I pay attention and if I do some of the things, you know, beyond food, if I do some of the things that are suggested in there, I can change what's going on even in a given day. Um, it's really it's it's up to me, but it is also possible to be swept by a particular orientation. But, Anyway, yeah, I had yeah, the yeah. same question for my teacher, though, when I was in training, I had the same exact question. So and then she went through the list and she was like, she wrote every single dosha combination out and every single guna combination. And she's like, everybody can have everything. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. OK, it's a good question. I think. <laughs> yeah, the other, and the other yoga teacher I, I asked these questions of Mary Claire says basically the same thing. It's sort of <laughs> but but. I, what I really like is, and talk about desires, I like the fact that if I pay attention to things and change certain things that I'm doing that might be more comfortable, but turn out to be little tiny prisons that keep me locked in a certain way, I can well, step forward and do something different. It might not be perfect, but it's different. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's like the important part of yoga is that you're being aware and present and being able to shift in that moment 
with whatever you need to make it work and get it done. Like we, for me, it's like you get caught up in your habits. You do something, the same thing over and over and you're doing, it's like you, you get locked in. But if you're doing, you know, like the simplest thing, like I had to do something yesterday and I really, like whatever it was, like wrap or press, whatever, I forget what it was, but, and I was just like, oh, I don't want to do this. Like I could feel the procrastination and lazy in me. All I had to do was put my Spotify on my Christmas list and I became a whole new person. Yeah. And it's like that one, you know, it's like, what can I do for myself right now? To, yeah. <laughs> to shift my energy, to become more balanced, like to just add a little boost in me. And I became a whole new person. Like yep. I got it done and the whole, the whole afternoon was fantastic. So yeah, I that's, that's so, that's, for me, that's so important to remember because otherwise it can kind of, it's, it's almost like you can feel your life narrowing and the world closing in. And meanwhile, all you have to do is like, you did Reiki through Christmas music and it worked, you know? Yeah. Like we get trapped in our own head. And once those negative thoughts come, they just like to drag us down with them. And it's like, yeah, the fastest way you can turn them positive or at least not even positive but neutral yeah yeah and I think catching catching yourself there that's like for me important yoga practice and sometimes it's like you know what I need to go be lazy right now and that's okay mm -hmm. like it's okay to go read a silly paperback novel on the couch and those are things that need to show up more on our to-do list if those are things you desire because those are things I love to do <laughs> like I spent almost an hour yesterday reorganizing every year I plan I don't like plan out I just like go through all the books I want to read and like put them on my year ahead just to like have some sort of structure because like it's not that I have to read them, but sometimes I want to read them. And so that's what I spent time. It was one of the things on my yearly to-do list that had to be done by January 1st. But I, we have to add things we desire onto the to-do list and not feel guilty about them. Here, here. <laughs> All right. So let's start some breath work and meditation. Uh, so I like to sit up, you can sit on a chair, if you have a block at home and you're sitting on the floor, I like to sit on a block or a bolster or a pillow, but you can sit on a couch or chair, wherever you're comfortable. Maybe you're laying down on your back, I'm just trying to create a straight spine, whoever you're sitting or laying. So just taking some breaths through the nose, inhaling and exhaling. Softening the features on your face. You might close your eyes or soft gaze out in front of you. On your inhale, see if you can lengthen it, fill up the low belly, expand the belly button out. And as you exhale, pull the belly button down to the spine, watching the air move up and out through the nose. Just creating slow, steady nostril breath. And if you're comfortable here, you can stay here. If you want to practice alternate nostril breathing, you're gonna take your right hand and fold your pointer and your middle finger into the palm of your hand and you'll release your ring and your pinky and your thumb. You're gonna use your thumb to close your right nostril and your ring finger to close your left nostril. So I'll take a deep breath in through the nose. And if it's not comfortable to fold the hands in, you can also place them on the third eye. This, this doesn't work for me, but it, there's no right or wrong. It's just preference. So close our right nostril, inhale through our left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left, close left, exhale right, inhale right, close right, exhale left, inhale left, 
close left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close right. Exhale left. Continue on like that. A few more rounds on your own breath. If retention and the locks are in your practice, you can add them on if you haven't already. When you're done with the alternate nostril breathing, you'll exhale out through the left nostril and rest your palms on your lap, setting up for your meditation, whatever that looks like for you today. I'm setting the timer. If you need to set your own timer, you'll do that.
Namaste.